of what Kirby Smart said. So Kirby Smart coming off back-to-back national titles, emphasize fighting complacency. That was the the big, that was the name of the game for what Kirby Smart was preaching. And, and I like the way he put this. He 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 wants people. To fight complacency, we're going to continue to hire guys that are intrinsically motivated on our staff. We're going to hire guys that have a passion and love of football. So I think those are two key elements to to fight complacency as a football program. He said with a lot of their players, they a lot of their players don't always have that intrinsic drive to be great, even if they are good players. So I think that's very important to think. You can't always – you still – like. Obviously, that's big in a football player, but if a guy's a five-star, you kind of have to, maybe if he's not as as driven, you kind of have to look the other way on that if a guy is. Because if you're Georgia, you are you do want to bring in the top-end talent, and if that means sacrif- if that means the guy is a little less motivated but he has an elite skill set, then you kind of have to sacrifice that. But, yeah, I think with your coaching staff, that's certainly something you got to have in place for Georgia because – you tend to human beings in general tend to just relax a little bit too much when things are going well and you can't you can't you can't once you take a once you take a breath that and relax that could mean that a loss or two and George is out of the mix for the for the national championship but uh yeah a reporter asked him to compare Alabama to Georgia kind of what they've done now compared to what Alabama did and what when Kirby Smart was there and uh Kirby Smart I kind of like the way he answered it said that he doesn't really he doesn't really compare it to what Alabama did and i think that that's maybe that's not the most fun answer but i think it actually probably is the right answer cuz every program's different recruiting in Al- georgia is different than alabama georgia is georgia is a state heavy in football talent alabama not as much so you've seen alabama do it by winning in other states like florida texas california georgia they can you see, Georgia can not only now with their national title pedigree, the back-to-back years, not only are they not completely dominating the state of Georgia, but they're being fairly dominant in the state of Georgia, and they're winning a lot of the recruits nationally. Like Jalen Carter was a Florida guy. You've seen that they they have done a good, they have done a nice job uh, of of mixing both, and that's that's key. I, I would say that. I guess if, in my opinion, if you had to compare them, that's that's key. So Alabama, fairly dominant in their state. Georgia, fairly dominant in their state. And then they have won the, the national recruiting battles. But, yeah, Nick Saban said years ago, if there's one pro, – Georgia is one program where you could have – you can have a lot of success just because you can – own your own state and uh, Nick Saban was a believer in that at LSU and uh, that's why it really resonated into, into them winning a, a national championship in, two, in 2003 but yeah I like that he emphasized uh, the Florida he, he likes the Florida Georgia rivalry Billy Napier talked about that too it'd be interesting if they do do a home and home with the Florida Georgia rivalry I know that was a popular question that the, the, the press asked but yeah for Georgia they they do return some talented players. I, the three guys they brought to the media days were were um, Kamari Laster, their corner, Brock Bowers, their tight end, and then Cedric Van Pran, their center. All, all three of those guys are really good players. I think Lassiter might just be a good college player. I'm not sure what his upside in the NFL is, but Van Pran, probably the best interior offensive lineman for this upcoming draft, and then Brock Bowers, the best tight end for this upcoming draft. So, yeah, Georgia... Despite losing a lot of guys to the NFL, they still have legit NFL guys coming back, and they still have a good, they still actually have a pretty good amount of depth. I think Georgia, I think Georgia's kind of getting pegged like for sure they're going to take a step back. And my question, I've kind of made the argument what if they're even better than last year? Now, saying that they're going to be better this year doesn't automatically mean that they're going to win the national title there could be a team that emer- maybe alabama's better than georgia last this year and or this upcoming year and georgia in 2022 and georgia and alabama wins it all or lsu's even better than georgia last year or this year so that doesn't always mean just because georgia's better that doesn't always mean that they're still the best team overall in college football there could be other teams that take that take even a, a bigger leap ahead of them but georgia like Brock Bowers is certainly a key difference maker. So, I mean, like if you look at Georgia's offense, like if you didn't know 
like if you knew George, like if you're a casual college football fan, you probably just know Brock Bowers. Like if you didn't know anything else, knowing that they returned Brock Bowers, like that's a, that's a critical piece in itself. You've seen that the the tight end position and Brock Bowers specifically has meant so much to this team, and he's not just a pass catcher. When I've watched tape on him, you really get appreciation for what this guy can do as a blocker. And Kirby Smart talked about how what just a, a good, quiet, um, incredibly hard worker Brock Bowers is. And this is a guy coming from, uh, speaking of getting talented players outside of Georgia, coming from California, it seems like this guy, this is a guy that's really uh, been driven to, to have a lot of success. And uh, I think you're going to see that this year. Quarterbacks me going to be a question for Georgia, but I say a question. It's it's a small question for Georgia because whoever the quarterback is, you know that this Georgia offense, the Georgia offense is going to be stable by their offensive line, by Bowers, enough wide receivers. Not that they're going to be strictly a game manager, but they're they're already in a a really good position to have success. So I'm not, I wouldn't be too worried about the quarterback position for Georgia. It looks like it's going to be Carson Beck, the starter. So, and then defensively, I mean, the secondary, there is a lot of talent in the secondary. Malachi Starks, Javon Bullard, Kamari last year, and not just high end talent, but a lot of experience too in this Georgia secondary. And experience at linebacker defensive line, I guess. A little bit of change, but you do have some guys that played a lot of snaps last year, like Nazir Stackhouse and Michael Williams. Michael Williams is a guy that, at the end of, he's a guy that should be a prime candidate for a, a monster breakout year. He certainly has a talent, former five star, flashed a lot of ability. I think this is a guy that is really going to come into his own this year. And you're talking, it could be, this could, is a guy that you could be talking about in 2024 as, the, as a top three, top five pick. So, I think it'll be fun to see how Michael Williams develops. But, yeah, Stackhouse, Stackhouse, another guy, D-Tackle, played some snaps. I mean, losing Nolan Smith, Jalen Carter is hard to replace. Those are true NFL difference makers. Those guys brought a, a nice complementary skill sets, and losing them will be tough. I mean, Ringo, Ringo too, is another guy that just – he's going to be – losing him is tough just because of this, like his size and speed and ability to cover – Bigger, faster, wide receivers um, certainly is a a loss. And then even like Stetson Bennett, Stetson Bennett, just a guy who his leader losing his leadership will be tough. You've, you got to feel like Stetson Bennett is a guy. I I can see Stetson Bennett being a coach down the road. I think he has a bright future as being a coach. I think his passion for the game. Whatever happens in the NFL, maybe he does eventually become a, a starting quarterback in the NFL or at least a good backup for a long time. I think I think you'll probably I'm gonna make a prediction. I think you'll see Stetson Bennett back at Georgia being a coach, whether maybe a quarterback's coach, an offensive coordinator. I think he's I think he is uh, a guy that, you know, with his story, I think he is driven to make find success and find a, a winning path. Um, in foot in in light in life after college football. Thanks for tuning in the Brant Parcel show. Make sure to stay tuned for more episodes and clips from the show. Till next time, peace.